as you probably know, there are many pre-made seed starting mixes that you can buy from the big box stores, but they have many, many drawbacks. And the first one being how expensive they are. They are so expensive that a lot of times if you do the math and do the cost breakdown, it's not worth it. You can buy seedlings or even the full grown produce from the farmer's market for less money. But if you really are dead set on growing your own food at home, then I suggest you save some money by making your own seed starting mix. So today I'm going to show you how we make our own seed starting mix that we have great success with. Let's first start by talking about what you're going to need for this seed starting mix. You are either going to need peat moss or cocoa core. We're going to use cocoa core today because the peat moss is in the back of the shed and I don't feel like going to get it. You're also going to need vermiculite and coarse sand. I have linked all of these ingredients below for you if you are not sure what you're looking for. If you are going to use peat moss, you're also going to need some lime. I'm adding in a freeze frame here because I realized I forgot to do the next intro. So we are going to start making our seed starting mix and the first thing we are going to do is um, hydrate the cocoa core. The first thing I'm going to do is add some water to our cocoa core so that it will hydrate and expand so we are ready to make our seed starting mix. So the cocoa core is all hydrated and I'm going to mix our seed starting mix in this green tub just to make it a little easier for myself. So I'm going to add in our cocoa core and then I'm going to send Jamie outside to get the sand. No time for that. Okay, in, in with the cocoa core we're going to add the sand. And then the vermiculite. Yeah. All right, now we're going to add in the vermiculite. Remember, if you are using peat moss, you need to also add lime. We are not using peat moss, so I don't have to add that. Now I'm going to Mix it all up. It is all mixed up and we are going to use this now to start some of our pepper plants and some of our flowers. So going to get the seed tray.
got our seed starting mix in a tray. This is a smaller tray than a 72 cell tray, but these fit better on our seed starting racks. So that's why we use those. So we are going to start some habaneros and some sweet peppers today and some straw flowers. All of these seeds need a little bit longer to germinate, which is why I am starting them now in January instead of waiting until say February or March. So I'm going to start them and I'm going to make sure that I label them so I don't forget and they don't get mixed up. I know exactly how many of each to plant because I went and checked my garden planner. If you aren't using your garden planner, I highly suggest you start. It is a great way to stay organized and keep everything straight. So straw flowers, sweet peppers, and habaneros. Everything. I am going to go put this on our uh, light stand, cover it with our clear dome, and I will water it from the bottom so that the roots grow nice and deep. I hope you guys enjoyed us making our own homemade seed starting mix. If you are starting seeds this year, make sure that you make your own so that you can save some money. If you want our full recipe for this, I have linked it below for you. Thank you so much for visiting the farmhouse today and happy growing.